Hey chickens, it's Miss T, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about membrane pottery today. So bear with me and my very new uh, screencastify skills. Okay, membrane pottery. Today we're, I'm going to focus a lot on talking about the principles of design of pattern and repetition, and within the format of Membrase pottery, which are stories of Native Americans of the Southwest. So let's take a look at the who, the who, what, when, where's, and how's. So Membrase is a Native American Pueblo people that um, were making these ceramic bowls between 750 and 1115 AD. So for a very short little period of time, um, this culture made these bowls and um, you'll see why they're so special in a little bit. They're mainly from Southern New Mexico, um, but also like east of El Paso, Texas, um, and even south into Chihuahua, Mexico. This ware is occasionally found as far west as central Arizona. Why? Um, you'll see why very soon. The bowls depict people's culture. Um, they were used for food as well as funerary purposes. How were they constructed? Um, using natural clays that were found in their regions, they would construct them using coils or by scraping out, um, scraping the clay to make it nice and smooth. Then they coated them in white slip, which is basically white clay, um, and then decorated using black and red clays um, to get them their patterns and decorations. So here's um, a map. This down here is um, Texas. This is um, New Mexico. Here's El Paso. So this kind of region of New Mexico. Okay, when you look at the bowls, most of the time we're going to be looking at them from the top down. This is the side view of a bowl, of a membrane's bowl. And they're very deep. You'll notice they have this nice deep curve to them. Um, they're mostly round, but some of these we'll look at, you'll see, aren't perfectly symmetrically circled. Sometimes they're oval shapes or even almost like a, a loose triangle shape, depending on the function. But um, they definitely were used for food and water and then also um, funerary, pro funerals, funerary, sorry, um, thanks. Okay, so something we need to mention when we're looking at these artifacts um, and art objects is to know that how did we get them? These objects mainly came out of Native people's graves. And how do they come out of their graves? Um, through archaeology, but also through kind of like a grave robbery. Um, so a lot of universities have um, done professional and legitimate archaeological digs and studies of these cultures. And, but there's also been a lot of um, cases where um, people have illegally gone out and dug up native people's graves to steal the ceramics. Um, Southwestern crafts have been highly collectible since around the turn of the century. So when you see a lot of these objects, um, it's important to, to know and to realize that they, um, they came from um, native people's um, graves, which is kind of sad if you think about it, but um, we need to think about these things. So here's an example of a typical membrane bur burial, burial, I'm so bad at talking today. Um, and so at the end of a person's life, they would dig them a grave and then, um, people would be buried with these bowls, um, either in, you know, in the, in the grave with them. And then a lot of the times the bowls were placed on the people's heads and they have these, um, holes, um, punched through the bowls and the holes have a religious significance for the native people. So there are some theories that 
it was the way for these um, people's souls to go to heaven or um, their version of um, heaven and so on and so forth. Um, and the reason why these bulls have survived for over a thousand years in their state is because they came out of graves, is that um, they were protected um, while they were in these graves. And then um, now we can look at them. So here's an example of one, and you can see why they're so neat. Um, they're extremely detailed in their decorations and the patternings are really complex. Um, you can see the hole that's in this one. So this one did, did come out of a person's grave. And um, you, and recently I found, you know, one was sold at auction for over $40,000. So people are still collecting these things and you'll see them in, you know, museums collect them. So that's why um, they're so si highly sought after. Okay, so let's start just talking a little bit about the forms and shapes on this guy right here. So what's interesting about these bowls is the way that the artists divide the space. So on this one, you can see there's these four quadrants, these four triangles on either sides. And then they have these little triangles that kind of um, go in between and connect. So it's almost like a mirrored image or a repeating pattern that goes around and around the form. And what's interesting I like about these two is they usually create sort of like these frames. So there's a circle on the outside edge and there's also a circle on the inside interior space and it creates these different frameworks. Um, I love the zigzags in this piece and I like how they colored in the negative space. Okay, let's move on. All right, so that's a good lead in for talking about the principles of design, repetition, as well as pattern. Um, and Membrae's art is the perfect art form to talk about these two things. So pattern um, is pretty common, you know, concept for most people, but a pattern is usually a symbol that kind of repeats itself, creates, you know, a pattern. Um, and repetition is when you take that pattern and repeat it around and around. So um, like on this one, you could say that each of these forms, these shapes are the pattern, but then having them repeat in a, you know, in a circle makes them have repetition. So we'll talk about some more examples of that. Um, so the first few bowls I'm gonna show you are very geometric and they're all about using these really interesting geometric um, shapes. And so what's cool about this one is a lot of times these membrane bowls are broken up into quadrants of four. So here what they might've done first was draw this square and then divide the bowl you know, into four little quadrants with these triangles, kind of like building up layers and layers. Um, and then if you look at, they, it has great uh, mirrored symmetry where um, if you were to fold this in half, this side matches that side and this side matches this side. Um, and even though it's not perfectly symmetrical in the middle, it's still visually feels balanced. Having these thin lines broken up with these kind of open white lines is really nice. And around the rim is like a nice black line that kind of uh, contain the overall composition. That's a good one. Um, this is an example of a, another like mirrored composition. This one's got some animals in it, some little goats, but You'll see if you look at it, um, if there was a line that drew straight across the middle here and you could fold the design in half. Um, what's interesting about these is, you know, this is all done on a curved surface. Um, I like how they have the lines around the outer edges to kind of like define like the frame. And then these um, lines in the center are kind of cool. Oops, jumped ahead. It's fine, we're moving on. Here's another great example with these fun bugs. 
And this is another great example using four quadrants. You can see how there's like the design has been divided into fours. Um, but what's also interesting, I say it's slightly twisted in that the heads of the little lightning bugs or ladybugs or whatever kind of bug this is, is slightly past, you know, that center line. And so as they move around the composition, they kind of start to kind of like twist slightly. So it's very balanced and symmetrical, but at the same time, it's kind of twisted. Um, here's another example of a mirrored composition. This one's a little more complex too, because there isn't like a defined center. It's kind of, um, it has like a line that kind of goes across the middle here, but see how it's like not perfectly straight, slightly twisted. And so it has a lot of really complex elements to it, um, compositionally. But if you look at the pieces of it, it's pretty simple. We've got interesting spirals, thin lines, thick lines, zigzag lines, filled in negative spaces. Very beautiful, very simple. Uh, and this is another four quadrant piece. Um, this one's interesting because the center of the bowl is very open just kind of like a nice quiet space in the center. And it has, you know, these little four triangle quadrants kind of breaking it up into the four corners or four directions. Um, and these larger diamonds match each other across from each other as well. But what I like about it is it's very busy and dense in its line work and colors and, and tones on the, around the perimeter. But then the center is very quiet and open. So that's a really nice piece. Here's another one similar to that one. You know, it's kind of like open and quiet in the center and then busy with spirals um, around the outer edges. So you'll see a lot of this kind of like spiral pattern. This one's a very angular spiral pattern. Okay, here's another great example of a mirrored image design that like the line would be like across the center here. Um, and also kind of diagonally. So instead of it being like a straight um, square design, it's kind of at an angle. And so we call it kind of overlapping, or I would even describe it as almost like imagine that the plate itself, the design is twisting. So that's a nice piece right there. Um, okay, now we're going to talk about some really some interesting bowls that the members did where they have really cool animal designs. And you'll still see, even though the designs are less geometric, there's still a lot of patterns um, and repetitions. So I love this little turtle bowl. So cute. Um, it's got the repetition of these triangles and the lines that create kind of the frame and this awesome pattern in the center of the turtle, kind of abstracted piece. Um, this is a neat rabbit or hare, and it has this object that I'm not really sure what it is, if it's representative of a feather or of something else, but I think it has something to do, you know, like religious or storytellings. Um, but what's cool about this rabbit design is how it's abstracted and stylized. You know, it's not really realistic. Like I love his ears kind of reference these sort of interesting feather designs that you see in a lot of Pueblo art. Here's another great rabbit um, piece with awesome patterning in it and that they made the body of the animal kind of squarish and then added all these great um, zigzag patterns and line work in them. This is an awesome piece. I love his little teeth. I love his eye and I love his little legs. So it's just such a simple and awesome design. Um, this bat bowl is pretty well known. Um, another great example of like breaking the form, the forms of the animal into simple shapes, like his little pear shaped or 
oval shaped body, these skinny legs, the long skinny tail and the wings are really cool. And using these interesting patterns um, within the, the actual shape of the bat, the body of the bat. Uh, this one's kind of hard to see, but I like this one. Is it a scorpion? Is it a crowdad? Is it a spider? Um, I love its abstracted forms. Super cool. And then here's a lizard bowl that's also amazing. You can see it's like kind of rough spikes around the edge of the lizard body, um, spirals, and it has that great symmetry. Like the design work is within the body of the lizard. Super cool. I love that piece. Great one. Okay, now we're talking about story bowls. These are awesome pieces um, that kind of um, set or like they sound. They tell a story. I like this one. It's like uh, giving birth. It's like, ah, little baby's coming out with his arm first. Um, so yeah, these are really fun. Um, here's a piece that's not a perfect circle. Like if you look at the overall shape of the bowl, it's, um, it's kind of almost a triangle shape. It's oval, but it has kind of like a little bit of a pointed end down at the bottom here. And so the form of the bowl could have had something to do with its purpose and its function. Um, and they're not all perfect circles. So I just wanted to point that out with this bowl. Also, I just absolutely love, I love that this might tell a story about like twins or two people. And there's this fish kind of acting like a halo above their heads. Um, there's some patterning in their, in their hair and um, just a really cool piece that tells a story. This was a piece that it was, it was titled hunting scene. And you can see this guy over here with like some tools, like a bow and arrow. This looks like a walking stick, but maybe it's something, you know, for hunting. And this guy's carrying like a deer. There's some other animals here. Maybe it's telling the story of a hunting trip that these guys went on. Um, it could also be telling um, important legends or um, oral histories and stories. This piece is great. Um, it's got this giant fish with a man coming out of it. And then this little piece right here is actually a feather design. Um, and it might represent like an important story or origin tale or maybe a dream that the person had. Again, there's the hole in the bowl that um, means it came from, um, you know, it was used in a person's burial. So this was on a person's head, you know, in their grave. Um, okay, here's another great story of about weaving. I was thinking this is about weaving a blanket because um, blankets and weaving is a big part of Southwestern native people's art forms. Um, but I was also looking at it and going, maybe this is more about gardening and like growing crops, you know, like the way they have the seeds here lined up um, and then the little plants growing and everyone has these interesting tools that they're walking around with. And then there's a kind of like a little dog type animal in this story too. Um, I wrote shamanism here because I'm thinking this could be like a, like a shaman or a religious kind of person or story person. I don't know if this person's legitly being decapitated or if it's more of like a, like a story of that. Um, but either way, it's kind of a strong image. And here's a person wrestling a bear. Uh, you can see his great little claws here and his teeth. Even though his body is so simple, but then having these little details of like the skinny little claws and little teeth. And I love this, um, this pattern in the body of the bear is really cool. Um, again, here's another bowl. It's not perfectly round, but um, it's neat. Okay, moving on. Um, this one is like be fishing or kite flying. Um, 
just like really beautiful, simple design, this awesome pattern in here. Not a lot of repetition in this design, obviously, but again, it's like really um, interesting because it's, it's like this person is flying this kite or this um, fishing net all the way around the bowl. So pretty. So that's the end of my little slideshow showing you guys some membrane pots and um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much.